Morning, Teresa. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. We give you praise. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord of Oshan, Thank you, Lord. Good morning, Brother Doll. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you, Lord. Father, we praise you this morning. We acknowledge you for who you are to us. Thank you for what you're doing down on the inside, to revealing yourself mightily down on the inside of us. Father, we thank you for what you're about to do and what you're showing us, Father. Thank you, Lord, for what the Spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty inside of us and around us, God. Use us like never before. Do it down on the inside. God, break up the fallow ground and everything that comes against us and block us from being in your purpose and your will. Father, have your way and let your will be done. Move on our behalf like never before. We need you, Jesus. We can't do nothing without you unless you move. God, nothing will be done. Put an excitement and a joy down on the inside because we know the joy of the Lord is our strength. And everything we do comes from you, God. We cannot do anything without you, God. So Holy Spirit, have your way and let your will be done down on the inside. We give you praise and we give you worship. Father, we are so thankful to you, God. Oh, because without you, we, we know we can't do anything. We'll fall and we'll fail. So open our eyes that we see like we've never seen before, God. God, do it again down on the inside. We need a refreshing in our spirit like never before, God. Oh, refresh us, God. Renew our strength, God. Renew our faith. Cover our atmosphere in the name of Jesus. Lord, do it down on the inside like never before. We're calling on you right now, God. Calling for your presence in our atmosphere right now, God. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And only with you we can move. And only with you we can speak. Because without you, we can't do anything. So Holy Spirit, have your way and let your will be done. Move on our behalf in the name of Jesus. Help us a function in the place you called us to, God. We receive your glory. We receive your presence. We receive your spirit, God. Knowing the best is about to happen on the inside of us. Father, we cry out to you for change. We cry out to you for deliverance. We cry out to you for breakthrough, for liberty in the spirit where we can move, God. Because, oh God, we thank you. We praise you. We exalt you. God, right now, let's just praise him just a few minutes. Let's just praise him for a few minutes. Under the ocean, under the Mahaya, we give you glory. For we find our rest in you. We find our peace in you. We find our joy. Mm. God, give us our compassion back. Give it to us now in Jesus' name. Jesus was moved with compassion, and that's how he healed, and that's how he delivered, and that's how he saved. So thank you in the name of Jesus that we're being like Jesus. He's down on the inside of us. Mm. In the name of Jesus, let your presence fill this atmosphere. Let your presence fill this atmosphere. Let your presence fill this atmosphere. Holy Spirit, have your way. 
do what needs to be done. Operate on us. Open us up, God, in the name of Jesus. Reveal what we need to know. Reveal it to us like never before. Hallelujah. We give you praise. God, we give you honor in the name of Jesus. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. For the glory of the Lord is going down on the inside of us. It's penetrating our souls and penetrating our minds. Get it in my so cold and my high. In the name of Jesus. Okay, I got stuff everywhere, so we're going to see where we're going to go first. Hey, Kiki, Kiki James and Kiki. <laughs> Glad you are on today. I want to talk about, hey, Joel, I was going to text you and tell you to get on today. The Holy Spirit must have did it for me. Good morning, Joel. You've been in my spirit for the last, spirit for the last couple of days. Good morning, Pastor Tara. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I got stuff all over the place. I want to talk about seeing today. If y'all can really see the stuff around me right now, <laughs> it's a mess. <laughs> but I'm only allowing you to see what I want you to see. Y'all are not going to see this mess. Come on, uh, uh, this little area right here, perfectly clean. But all around me, we're going to talk about seeing. We're going to only allow people to see what we want them to see. But if I would show you this whole thing, y'all would think I'm a junkie person, but really I'm not. Just when you're in the Word, stuff is everywhere. Pencils and, and markers and books. And But I'm only allowing you to see what I want you to see. And we're going to talk about that today. Good morning, good morning, Keisha. You late, Keisha, now this player. Good morning, good morning. All right. Where I'm going to start first. First thing, I wanted to find what, um, what the word see means. To perceive by the eye. To perceive by detect. Uh, as if by sight. Uh, to uh, imagine and possibility, a form of mental picture down on the inside. You visualize something, that's what you see. Uh, and most of the time in the area of seeing, we're talking about getting in the place of deliverance. We have to have eyes to see, eyes to discern on what is going on in the atmosphere. It's not about people coming. We're going to use church because I'm the pastor, but, you know, it, it could be anywhere. It can be in a shopping store. It can be in the mall. It can be um, the, the, the spirit of the Lord. Your eyesight of sin should always be manifested inside your spirit. But we're going to talk about the church right now. When people come up in our prayer lines to, 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 get pr to, to seek prayer, and they may come up with one thing in mind, but... The, the uh, ability of walking in deliverance, that's one aspect of deliverance, is walking in the eyesight or insight of seeing and see beyond the natural, because the Bible says the natural man cannot understand spiritual things. So it's seeing beyond what is revealed in the natural. A lot of times people come to the prayer line and they say, Pastor, did you pray for me? This is what I want you to pray for me for. But if you're a pastor that discerns and a pastor that sees, you can see beyond what they're telling you. I and mean, sometimes they come up with one thing, but when God starts, when deliverance and the power of God starts deliverance in the atmosphere, a lot of times what they come up for, that's not what God want to deal with. He want to deal with the inner uh, emotions or the inner thing that's going on inside them that's causing a blockage in their spirit. And what we're dealing with now, I want to talk about, um, let me go to the scripture first before I go into, into what I want to say. Remember the story about Jesus was... Um, with his disciples and with his crowd and he was walking down the street and uh, Bormaeus uh, was was crying out saying you know that he wanted to receive his sight you know he was crying out to God in the crowd and the disciples was like kind of wanting to shut him up and he kept on crying Lord uh, Jesus have mercy on me and Jesus uh, had compassion and the disciples was like you know Jesus probably didn't want to mess with a blind person but he had compassion on that blind person and Jesus stopped and said hey Barnabas, what do you want me to do for you? And 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 and, um, and Barnabas said, "Son of David, uh, Messiah, or um, Jesus Christ, can I receive my sight?" And Jesus said, "Yes, you receive your sight." And what Jesus was saying in that point, he was saying that uh, all the disciples around me, all the uh, the people in the crowd are all around me, but this person right here sees who I am. Uh, because he's blind in the natural, but in the spirit, he's not blind. And a lot of times we look at people 
because they can see naturally, it means that they can see, but they're more blinded than the person that, that, that's naturally blind. And what Jesus was making a point right there is like, y'all around me every day, y'all see me, but y'all still don't really see what's going on. You really don't see the manifestation of God power, and you really don't see who I am. And a lot of times, the people that we think are not seen, we, we, uh, we, we, we push them to the side and, um, and call them uh, insignificant are they not they they're not the the, the the person that you want to put in place I want a person to put uh, on your team I want a person to put uh, in the place of working in your church because of what you see in the natural I remember going to a few churches because I was very quiet and I didn't say much to people and a lot of people uh, looked at me as if I didn't have anything on our um, the power of God and Spirit wasn't wasn't on my life, or the uh, because they didn't see something from what they visually wanted to see. Uh, when I spoke, I didn't speak Greek or Hebrew. Hebrew. Or when I spoke, I didn't uh, I didn't do things like they would do it. So a lot of times they wouldn't call on me. They'll call on my husband, and they will. They and, and, and there's a there was a cry down on the inside. God, I wish people would see me as as who I am and not what they perceive I should be. And, um, and if you wasn't doing things like they were doing, uh, or you weren't acting the way they were acting, or if you weren't praying for people like they pray for people, then they wouldn't use you because you have to be like this. So they would never choose me. They would never use me. I, I would never get called up to, to lead the prayer. I would never get called up. Mm, hallelujah. Whew. I would never get called up to do anything. And I'm saying, God, I know that there's something down on the inside. And the one thing God showed me in the midst of that, he said, people have spiritual blinders on them and they see from the natural sin, but they don't see from the spirit. They see what they can perceive from the outside and not from the spirit. But he said, I'm calling up a, a, a remnant of people that I'm, I'm raising up that's been, 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 been pushed to the side and pushed to the curb. And I'm calling up, I'm changing the guards and I'm putting fresh faces, fresh manner, fresh anointings on people that that, that people saw as, as being just uh, a burden or being just crazy or just being different. He said, I'm raising up a strong army. And it's not going to be the people that you think it might be. I'm using the situation right here. I remember, you know, as preachers sometime and, and uh, we get ourselves together, get ready to minister before the people and we got the people in place in our church and, and we got the sound man in place and we got the music in place and we got the praise and worship team and we got everything in place and we said, this is what God's saying, this is what God is doing. And, and I found out that, that when God called me to do this 10 o'clock uh, ministering at 10 o'clock, he said, I'm pulling the microphone away. I'm, I'm pulling everything that, that, that you deem as giving you power. I, I, I'm, giving, I'm taking everything away that you deem as, as an authority. Because y'all know when a mic sounds real good and, and, and the sound system is good, it's almost like the, something the preachers say all the time. It's like I feel my power. It's like the mic is giving you extra strength. Uh, it's giving you a louder voice. But he said, in this season, I'm pulling away the microphone. I'm pulling away the, the, the glamorous churches and the chandeliers, and I'm pulling everything that we deemed that was giving us power, giving us recognition, or, 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 or giving us status in the place that we're called in. And he said, because they're blinded, they're not seeing, they're not seeing beyond the chandelier, they're not seeing beyond the choir, they're not seeing beyond the praise and worship team, they're not uh, uh, um, uh, seeing beyond the keyboard player or the, or the sound system, they're not seeing beyond the videos and everything that they, that they, they, they get together the, the deem to say that is church. He said, I'm pulling out all this stuff from under them and I'm letting people see them, uh, 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 people see who they really are behind the camera, but there is no mic. And I found out that that, that this part right here with no microphone and beyond the camera, most folks can't do, guess what? Because they didn't have no power. It wasn't about the people. It wasn't about the love. It wasn't about the joy. It wasn't about delivering nobody. It was about the status they were standing in. It wasn't about, come on, getting people saved, getting people uh, filled with the Holy Ghost and getting people to grow and disciple, uh, discipling people. It wasn't about that. It was about the, the status and, and, a, and a, um, showing a 
a good show and showing a good entertainment. But the Lord Spirit said that they're blinded, they cannot see. He said, I'd rather see a person that can't see natural. I can use them more than people that got that got the natural eyesight. And what he's doing in this season, he's changing the guard. He's sitting some down and putting some up. He's taking away, come on, the the um the thing that we most cherish the most, and he's taking away all the props, and he's taking away all the, the things that we use to, to deem sin is church. He said, I'm calling out the people that's after my own heart. And what we've been for years, he said, we've been blinded, and we've been stuck in religion, and we've been stuck in what we think God is saying, the order of church is, or what we said, God said, this is the way it's supposed to go. He said, I'm pulling the covers off, and I'm pulling, I'm, I'm pulling everything down, I'm pulling Everything, everything out the way and I'm, I'm standing here and, and, and showing you naked before me oh my god you have nothing to 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 hide behind you have no suit to put on you you have nothing to look like you one way he said that's what I'm calling the real pastors I'm calling the real preachers that no matter what happened no matter what how God moved I'm still going to stand I'm still going to do ministry I'm not going to give up I'm not going to, to throw in a towel because this is a season that God is saying I'm saying who is the real people who are my people so my people call by my name will humble themselves who are the real people is the ones that still standing right now. They got these big old churches, but can't even use it. They got these these big old choirs, but they can't even sing. Come on, they got these uh, these, these powerful mic systems, and powerful keyboard players, but cannot use it. He said, "I'm pulling away everything. I'm allowing you to to be naked before me. I'm allowing to see who is on the Lord's side. Who, no matter what they go through and and, and what they don't have and and what they 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 used to use as a prop, they used to use as as a fake anointing, used to use as something to make them." look like they own a really good platform he said i'm pulling all that away and the people are seeing and found and finding out that this man of god is not the true man of god this woman of god is not the true woman of god he said people are blind by all the the crystals are blind by all the scenery he said i'm pulling all the scenery away and when you pull all the scenery scenery away wait mm, and it behind. he said when i'm pulling all that away he said, I'm finding out that people are now depending on me. Come on. Because without no anointing, you are blind. You cannot see. You blinded by the, the what people think you should be and what people think uh, uh, you're supposed to do it this way. You're supposed to do it that way. He said, I'm taking all that away. He said, blind Barnabas can see more than any of my disciples. He can see more than the people around me because he knew who Jesus was. He knew that he was a son of God. He was a son of David. He knew that. But the people around him, because of the, 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 the notoriety, because they were, they, were, they were proud to be with Jesus, and now not what Jesus could offer them. Come on, that you know, the, the followers of Christ was proud of their status. They was proud of, of, of the, the, the place they were standing in. But here this blind man saying, son of David, have, mer have mercy on me. I need to be healed. I need to be set free. I need to be changed. People of God, people of God need us to see. He needs to pull the blindness off our eyes. He needs to change our way of thinking. He needs to change the guards and put someone in fresh and put someone in new. Put someone in that, that has uh, the heart after God. Uh, uh, like, like David. He was the one that's after God's own heart because of his repentance, because of his sin. What keeps you blind? Sin keeps you blind. What keeps you blind? Pride keeps you blind. What keeps you blind? Not knowing who you are and not knowing that God loves you. And he puts something down on the inside and he's coming back at the eyesight is who I perceive by my eyes. I detect my insight. My insight is what I see, what I perceive. It is the recognition, is the, is the, um, what I visualize, is what I, um, mental capacity is who I am. And I am a child of the King and I can't, I can't, um, I can't be nothing else. I have to be who God called. And what we have to be is we can't, you know, pretend like we somebody else. We have to allow God to use us like never before. There's a scripture that I wanted to read. Let me find it real quick. Let me find it real quick. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. It's hiding behind here. It's 2 Kings 6 and 14. Uh, I'm going to paraphrase some of it. Elisha had a servant. And um, they were about to go in battle. And all the servant could see was the enemy coming towards them. That's all he could see because he was looking in the natural. He wasn't looking in the spirit. And uh, 2 Kings, the 6th chapter and the 16th verse, Elijah said, Do not be afraid, Elijah. He said, Do not be afraid, Elijah said, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. But the servant couldn't see because the servant could not see in the spirit because he was looking from his natural eyes. So fear came in from seeing from his natural eyes. And then, uh, then Elijah prayed. He said, oh, Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw that the hills were full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. And so what Elijah was saying is his servant, the one that was with him, was spiritually blind. He said, man, if you can only see. He said, I can see the army of God, and I can see the horses, and I can see the fire, and I can see the glory of God. And when I look at the enemy, I'm not seeing that that many chariots and that many horses and a, the guy kept being afraid and Elijah kept wondering why the guy was afraid and finally Elijah said I'm paraphrasing y'all finally Elijah said God just opened up his eyes because right now I don't have time for my servant to be my servant to be in fear I need him to see exactly God what I see because we're about to you about to fight the battle for us and I want him to seek oh God in this in the spiritual side and not in the natural I don't need him to to be afraid and in fear he said oh God I pray oh Lord please open his eyes and what we are right now is God is saying that we're blinded in so many areas we're blinded in our spiritual eyesight so when we're talking about walking in deliverance we're talking about walking in freedom it's not about just praying someone in the prayer line it's about perceiving it's, it's about God open my insight let me know what's going on with the person that is front in front of me father let me see and then when you let me see God give me the power and the wisdom and knowledge to go forth and cause deliverance to go forth inside of who I'm praying for so it's not about just praying for people. You ever hear, heard people say, uh, will you pray for me? And a lot of times when people say that, I say, God, really, what's down on the inside? If I want to walk in deliverance and manifest your glory, then I got to allow you to give me the wisdom and knowledge. And I got to allow you to give me the eyesight. I need to uh, allow you to open my spiritual vision so that I can see like i never seen before. God, don't let me be blinded. Don't let me uh, uh, go uh, and do the religious thing or go uh, into the ritual of doing things. But let your glory be manifested down on the inside. We're talking about walking in deliverance, walking in freedom. And the first state of walking in deliverance, you can't see nobody else if you don't see yourself. And what God is doing now in this season, he's opened our eyes and causing us to see like we've never seen before. I know doing this situation when the church is closed down and and we all home and and um I, I really believe it was a good thing not a good thing that people are dying but it was a good thing to the point where you can just sit back and kind of see what's been going on and kind of revisit and look over things and one thing god did for us he said i need you to sit back i need you to look i need you to watch and i need you to uh, to to um Look at the situation, look at the order, look at your church, or, or look at your faith, or look at what you deem as being powerful or in God. He said, as the manifestation of the glory, has have, have anybody been delivered? Has anybody been set free? Has anybody been made whole? It's given us a place of stepping back and really assessing our situation and finding out exactly where we are. Come on, say exactly where we are. And what God want to do, he's doing some changes. He's doing some changes of the guard. And he's opened our eyes. So we're seeing the things that we couldn't see at one point. I've been having so many people message me and, and asking me things and, and pondering on things. And, um, and last night I decided to watch a documentary on preachers. And, and usually I don't even watch things like that. But for some reason I was drawn to that. And it was talking about 
that during this season of everybody calling itself a prophet, during this season everybody uh, uh, calling itself evangelist and calling itself pastor, the document, the, 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 the thing I was watching, it was saying that God is shining a light on the people that we deemed as powerful. And now it's showing that people that we thought were powerful is not as powerful as we thought we were. Because when, like I said before earlier, when everything is pulled away and they are just in front of a string Facebook and they're just in front of a desk or they're sitting in a chair, they're feeling restless. It's, it's like they, they don't know what to do. And people are really seeing who they really are. And people are finding out out and they're and they're in the documentary that I was looking at yesterday uh, they're finding out that these are my pastors and I'm not going back to these people and they're finding out that oh my god I, I was blinded by the the, uh, the the suit I was blinded by the microphone I was blind, by, blinded by the loudness and I and I was blinded by the keyboard player and the emotions that that music took me to but when it comes to the power of God I didn't I didn't notice come on that there was no spirit operating I was blinded by uh, uh, the scenery I was blinded by the church building I was blind about the choir and the praise and worship singer I, I didn't I didn't know that the praise and worship singer was powerless I didn't know that the key, the keyboard player was powerless. I didn't realize until now they're seeing a pastor on a screen trying to minister and trying to teach, but they don't see no power. And I was looking at a documentary last night, and it was showing how people were blinded and and, and um, about what's going on, and it was blinded by. Uh, uh, the situation is going on now and now the, the members are asking questions and the members are, are looking for hope from their leader and the leaders cannot give them hope and it's to the point where people are uh, getting to the point where they're denying God and saying God's not real because why we cause us to go through what we're going through and that's what the devil does he blinds us of what the power of God can do and how the power of God can change and how the power of God that if I don't have anything if I don't have any props that and I can still preach the word of God. It's the power of God down on the inside. It's not what I had on. It's not about the building, but it's about the manifestation of God's power and what God is doing. He's showing the real you. He's showing who you really are. Come on. He's showing you. Come on. To the power of God. It's the, it's the atmosphere. It's what's down in your spirit. If you're called to deliverance ministry, you can still deliver on the street, uh, screen. If you're called to evangelism, you can still evangelize whatever you call to your call has not changed and we got to take the blindness off our eyes and get in the place that God want us to be in come on say the place that God want us to be in Elijah prayed he said oh Lord please open up his eyes that he may see and one of my prayers has been for the last couple of weeks is God open our eyes because we are so blinded. Uh, we're blinded by our situations. We're blinded by what we're going through. We're blinded by our past. Hey, I'm going to use this, and I really don't want to use this, but I'm going to use this for an example of being blind. You ever Have you ever dated someone? I'm going to talk about marriage. Have you ever dated someone and you were blinded by what they look like, you're blinded by how they look, you was blinded by their personality, you was blinded by how they act, but then when you decide that you didn't want them to be your boyfriend no more, and they was not yours anymore, but you look back, and look back in, like, why did I like that person? What was I seeing? What, you know, I don't even like their personality. I don't even like how they look. And what it is, you was blinded by love. You was blinded by all the little stuff around it, but you really couldn't see because you was in the relationship. I remember we were in this diocese one time, and once you're in this diocese, it's, it's, it's hard to get out. And uh, once you're in, just all you can see, you can't see no no other place. You think everybody else is not saved. You think that you're the only diocese. But as soon as you get out of that diocese and look back in, you're like, why was I so blind? Why couldn't I see? And what the devil does, he put blindness on you and you you really you see in the natural but you cannot see in the spirit and what God is doing he wants to manifest his glory down on the inside he said I'm taking the blindness off your eyes I'm letting you see 
who you really are. Even yourself. Come on. You look at your own self. Even through the situation right now. It's called you to look at your own self and your own situation. It's called you to open up those rooms and allow God to deliver you down on the inside. Come on. We're talking about there is 90 rooms down on the inside. And in those 90 rooms that's down in our spirit, the devil has got us blind in so many areas. I've been talking to different people, and they're still dealing for issues. Uh, they're still dealing with issues from 20 years ago. They're still dealing with issues for, issues for 30 years ago. And I was pri uh, crying out to God yesterday. I said, God, let's open up our eyes. We have the word of God. We are the child of the king. What areas do are we blinded in that we can't see that you are king of king and you are lord of lord? Why are we still dealing with abuse? Why are we still in, uh, dealing with daddy issues? Why are we still dealing with abortion? Why are we still dealing with things of our past? And God said, because they're blind. The, the, the devil has got them mentally blind. He got to the point where they can't see. And they're saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. But they still got rooms and doors down on the inside that God wants to open up. Come on, come on, oh my God. God wants to open up the doors and he wants to deliver you and he wants to set you free. But because the enemy got your hands tied and because the enemy got you blind and you're, you're stuck at a place come on you're stuck 20 years ago and the devil got you stuck in a place and you don't realize if you just open up your eyes and really see that there's an enemy at your door if you open up your eyes and see oh my god that you've been tested and you've been tried if you open up your eyes and see that this enemy is blocking your view and blocking your path then you understand that I got, I got the word of God. I, I, I got the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I got, I'm, uh, come on, he's my father, God of deliverance, the God of, that will set me free and make me whole, the God that can change me. You should not be stuck back in your path. You should not be stuck back in, in the things that, that hindered you 20 years ago. You got to come on, wake up and open up your eyes and allow God to reveal what's down on the inside. There's so many areas that we're blind in and so many things that God wants to change us and, and God wants to do, but we got to allow him to do it. Let me go back to the definition of seeing. It's the, it's the body of knowledge and principle. Uh, it's the body of knowledge, the principle that develops in a specific society of period is causing you to see an insight is causing you to get understanding it's causing um uh eyesight causes your your wisdom it causes your authority it causes uh whatever's on the inside to flourish and come through you have to see to know what god is doing you have to see to know that god is revealing something you have to see to understand your boundaries um uh, your territories, all these things you have to see. Because if you don't see it, then the devil will take your, your city, he'll take your town, he'll take your church, he'll take your family, he'll take your children, and he's blinding you by everything that's going on around you. And what we got to do is we got to say, God, open our eyes that we need to see because we've been blinded for so many years and he's causing us to wake up and wake up our spirit because our spirit been, been asleep so long. When you sleep, your eyes are closed. You cannot see. And when God is coming in and he wants to use you like never before and God is saying, I need you to see. I need you to sit down. Uh, it, what's so funny about the, the whole situation is, is, is all this time we've been busy and we've been just doing things and we've been, you know, all the preachers that have been evangelized and going across the country and people have been busy and not having a prayer time and, and not dedication dedicating their self and not allowing God to use them. All of a sudden, they're at a place of nothing. They can't fly nowhere. They can't go nowhere. And all of a sudden, God is revealing them themselves and he's revealing them what they should have been seeing a long time ago. He's opening eyes. He said, I'm, 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 I'm moving everything out the way. And if you feel God is moving things out the way, you feel God is changing the guard, you're feeling God uh, bringing you up to another place of, of consecration and another place of loyalty and another place of devotion before him. You're seeing God uh, building you up and you're seeing you're hearing God's voice more clearly because you don't have a lot of voices in your ears and you're finding out God he said he said blind Barnabas uh, what do you want me to do 
have mercy on me. He was crying out to God because he was tired of the situation he was in. He was tired of being blind. And, and he was wondering, what, what, what's all this noise going on? He said, Jesus is passing by. Jesus is coming through. He said, oh, my God, if I know, I know this man. I know this man. He's the Messiah. He's Jesus. And the situation I'm in, he can change the situation I'm in because I'm blind. Oh, no, boy, I'm not my he said, I'm blind. And when he met Jesus, he said, God, Jesus said, what do you want me to do? He said, I want to see. I want to be able to see. And I feel that he was talking about spiritually and naturally. He said, I want to see. I want to receive my sight because I've been blind for all these years and I can't see. And what I want to do is I want to pray this prayer. It's called spiritual prayer. Those who got the book is on chapter 67. It's prayers for spiritual eyes to be open. Those who got the book, it's chapter 67, so you can find it in the book. It's the prayer book that we're using to pray these prayers. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Father, we thank you that we see it. We're not blinded by our situation and what we're going through that we're allowing you to use us and that we see like we ought to see and that you're releasing your spirit showing us what we need to know oh my God you're showing us so we're thankful to that God that we have vision in this season Oh my God. Then Elijah prayed, Oh Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes. Open the eyes of the young man. He saw the hills was full of horses and chairs and full of fire. All around Elijah. And then the army came against him. And Elijah prayed to the Lord, Please strike those enemies with blindness. And what Elijah did, he said, God, open our eyes that we see spiritually. But strike our enemies and blind them before us. He said, we'll see in the spirit and where we once was blinded and natural, God strike our enemy so they can, so they can't see. Because if the enemies can't see, then as our army comes to feed them, come on, they won't see us coming. So his prayer was blind. It's almost sound like David's prayers. Strike them down. Uh, please strike the people with blindness. So he struck them with blindness according to the word of Elijah. So Elijah reversed the, uh, the blindness from the servant. The servant could see. He couldn't see the natural, but he can see in the spirit now. And then God said, strike my enemy and strike them so they can be blind. I was, uh, I heard of a business, a couple of businesses actually, uh, that during the season, they, um, the, you know, if we look at people from the outside, and I think it was David that says that, um, because of prosperity of the the people of the sinners, uh, the ones that are not saved, it almost shook him. Because of the prosperity of the people, it almost shook him of what he can see. And um, and Lord, the Holy Spirit was telling me this morning. He said, a lot of times we look at people. You know how people get on Facebook and they get on Instagram and they and they show their you know, make them look like they're better than who they are and their business look like it's growing and prospering. But one thing the Holy Spirit showed me is sometimes we're blinded by uh, what the world is doing and it seems like they are doing better than what we are doing. And it seems like we as Christians are not doing, you know, what we should be doing. But one thing God showed me this morning, he said, yeah, they may look like they're doing better, but there's a, there's a temporal. And, um, and then you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. And, you know, just because you watch things on Facebook and you watch things on Instagram, it's not what is real. Um, it's not, you have to see in the spirit and see past that they're, uh, that they're going through a whole lot. They may be dealing with a whole lot. They, they may be stressing out, trying to keep the, the business going. But one thing about um, in Christ, uh, you know, we don't have to worry about that. We get a peace of the Lord. We The peace of the Lord is with passes all understanding. We'll, we'll guard our jobs and guard our businesses and guard our, you know, what we're going through. But we can't go by what we see in the natural, but we got to see in the spirit. 
and I know a couple of businesses they from the Facebook and from the um, and from the uh, Instagram they look really good but if you know the true story and know what they're going through you really can see for real and discern that in their hearts they're struggling in their hearts they're 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 worried they're concerned they they're not at peace like we will be at peace and he said they're blinded because the enemy um, is keeping us blinded and we look at the people who are not saved and we're wishing and it looked like because we saved things are getting worse for us but it's not because they are blind. We're the ones that can see. And the devil already got them. So he's not even going to. I was doing a study on, um, I think, a day before yesterday. And it said that um, the devil already got them. That if, you know, he's keeping them prosperous. He's keeping them going strong. Because they're blind and they can't see. And he's keeping them at bay. So he's not going to mess with them. But as soon as you get saved, you're going to look like all hell's breaking loose. And look like the devil is loose up on you. And, um. He said, don't be blinded by what you see. And, 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 and like David said, don't don't let the prosperity of the people uh, lure you away and think that because you were God, that God is not doing anything or he's not manifesting his glory. And it looked like your prayers are not being answered. It looked like you don't know what God's called you to do. It looked like you're more confused. And what it is is the devil is trying to keep you from that point of deliverance, trying to keep you from that point of seeing, trying to keep you from that point of praying and consecrating yourself because he don't want you to do the will of God and do it in the right uh, mindset. He wants you to be mentally disturbed. He wants you to be uh, mentally broken and it looked like the other person is doing better than you but he said that's the blindness of the devil is calling you to be blind and he wants you to open your eyes and really see the real picture that there's more for us than it is for them and like what Elijah serpent was doing the light was like man I'm in fear you know it looked like that that the world is doing better it looked like things are better uh, uh, for them and I know we're saved and we're saying we got God with us but God I can't see and we got to do the seasons asking God to open up our eyes so we can see like we ought to see because we're blinded and, and too many we're distracted we're allowing things to distract us we're allowing things to to get in our way we're allowing things to um to um to make us leave the position God's called us to. The Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto us. But we've been blind in allowing our situations and our problem and what we're going through to stand in front of our eyesight and cause us not to see because there's a blockage there and we can't see beyond beyond what our situation is. And what God wants to do is he's wanting to pull the blindness off our eyes. He wants us to manifest his glory. And the only way we can manifest his glory is when we understand the mandate is on our life. We understand what God is doing down on the inside of us. We can't be workers. I believe when we come back to church, and I believe when we come back, that God is going to show himself even mightily. Because I think in a situation, it caused us to be more in prayer. It caused us to discern. It caused us to see. And when you go back to your churches, come on, ask your pastor, what can I do to, to get in that place of seeing, the place of hearing, and the place of manifesting God's glory and allowing God to move and manifest in our sanctuary? Uh, what can I do so my eyes can be open and I can see, so I can walk in deliverance, so I can deliver someone else? We're, you know, I'm trying to go around the, 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 uh, the deliverance thing because we're going to start on Tuesday with deliverance. It's hard trying to go around it. But um, it's, it's, it's getting us a, a, a point of doing and manifesting and walking and allowing God to use us like never before and allowing that holy boldness and all, all, this, all these things that, that has to be in place before we walk in uh, what we call it, the deliverance or walk in freedom to set, it, to set someone else free and causing God to, to do what he needs to do down on the inside of us. What I'm getting ready to do, we're going to read this prayer. It's prayer for your eyes to be open. It's prayer for spiritual, for your spiritual eyes. Now, here's the prayer point. Is this prayer will help you to put in position to receive this gift from the Father of light. And as you pray these prayers, you'll be in full assurance that your spiritual eyes are going to be open. The point is, your spiritual eyes is the ability that the Holy Spirit gives to see in the realm of the Spirit. The spiritual eyes is the ability that the Holy Spirit gives to see into the realm of the Spirit. 
is to see with a spiritual eyes what you cannot see with your natural eyes. It is able to it is to be able to see angels as well as demon operating. One thing having your spiritual upper, your eyes open is not only seeing in the spirit as far as spiritual angels, but it caused you to see as part as the demons and devils. So it caused you to see the good and caused you to see the bad. And both of them in the spirit world. It says as as um, with everything that comes from above, this is granted by the Father through Jesus Christ and operated by the Holy Spirit. So when you say, God, open up my spiritual eyes, it's almost like he did Elijah. He said, Lord, let him see. When he told him that, that, that for God to open up his eyes because he was in the natural, he meant, God, let him see in the spiritual realm. So when he saw the horses and the fire and the chariots and all the stuff around them, that was seen in the spirit. S seen in the spirit is not the same as seen in the natural. In the natural, all he can see was, a, uh, was an enemy and the natural horses and chariots, probably the thousands of the horses and chariots for the, the uh, what, what you see in the natural as far as the enemy but when he said open up my eyes when he said open up his eyes he said i need him to see in the spirit because a lot of times when we go through things we're seeing it in our natural eyes but we got to say god let us see in the spirit let us see the real deal let us see really what's going on uh in front of us because what we really see is what the enemy want us to see and that's discouragement that's doubt and that's fear but when you pray god open up my spiritual eyes you'll start seeing angels you'll start seeing hearts and chariots you start seeing that's more for me over here on God's side than what's on the enemy's side. It's, it's, it's to the point when you start getting depressed and you start getting weary and you start getting in doubt and fear. You have to pray, God, open up my eyes. Take the blindness off because I need to see how uh, what I really need to see. Because right now what I see is very discouraging. What, I, what I'm really seeing is hurts. And what I'm really seeing is causing me to doubt and causing me to have fear but when you open up your spirit eyes you start seeing come on things that you would normally see you start seeing in, di di in a dimension that is beyond the natural sense and come on so when we're talking about praying in the church and we're talking about getting to the place we need to, to be in church our spiritual eyes need to be open we cannot look at the uh, uh, the church in our natural he said where the spirit of the Lord is there's liberty he said open Open up my eyes that I'm able to see angels. Open my eyes that I'm be able to clear war and I see horses and chariots all around me. Come on, so as you're going through, I don't care if it's with your marriage, I don't care if you're going through with your children, all you see is the evil. You see the evil one, you see the, the devil's of vices, you see him coming against you. But at the same time, God, if you open my eyes, I can see beyond what is in front of me. That I'm not being blinded. God, my spiritual eyes need to be open. I need you to close my eyes to the enemy. And I need to see really, really what's going on. I think a lot of us would not be discouraged if we can really see in the spirit. And you can always tell by the conversation of people that's praying and people are not praying. The one is not praying, the conversation will be about their troubles and what they're going through it, and it'll be about their past and what they dealt with. The whole conversation be that. But when you're talking to a spiritual person, they'll say, oh, I'm going through, but God, oh, I'm going through, but I see something else. I see a bigger picture. I see God delivering. I see God setting me free, but I'm just going to hold on until my change come. And what we do is we don't, we don't, we, we supposedly more spiritual than we're natural, but we find find ourselves more in the natural and then more in the spirit but we got to do like our Elijah's prayed he said oh lord he said a simple prayer he didn't say no long prayer because you know when you're fighting with deliverance and fighting with your enemy you ain't got time for no long prayers you ain't got time to say, oh, wait, hold up. I didn't pray all day. Hold up. I got to get myself together. So his servant with him was in the natural. Elijah was in the spirit. He said, God, open, please open. He said, please. I'm begging you, God, because right now we're in the midst of our enemies. I don't, we don't have time for nobody to be blind. We need everybody on post and everybody on one accord and everybody seeing. So he said, oh, Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eye instantly, opened the eyes, the young man's eyes instantly. Let's say you are all at the altar.
and, and, and you got people, you know, all around you in place. And you perceive that sister so and so ain't got it together. At that moment, you can say, listen, God, we in the midst of deliverance. We don't need no interruptions. But God, right now, I need you to open up her eyes right now. I need you to open up his eyes right now. Because right now, we all need to see. Because there's an enemy in front of us. Come on. And if one is out of place, it can kill every last one of us. When we walk in deliverance, we can't play no games. I remember one day we was at a church. And um, me and Pastor were, you know, being, we was always street, doing street ministry. Um, all through the churches we were going through, uh, going in, uh, going, uh, I was part of. And uh, the pastor would ask us, and he'll say, well, do you want the church, to, do you want this person to be with you? He said, no, no, you know, I got to know that the person is with me. I got to know their spirit. I got to know that the power of God is down on the inside. I'm very, I got to be watching when I got to see, and I can't be blinded by their gift, and I can't be blinded by their talent, that I got to know that the Spirit of the Lord, come on, beyond what they're doing, beyond what I perceive in my natural, beyond what looks good, beyond the education, beyond but how eloquent what they speak, I got to know that we, we're going to the enemy's territory, and we got to make sure that everybody around us is well equipped and ready come on y'all well equipped and ready come on i don't care if you can play the keyboard i don't care if you can sing a tune and roll the words it doesn't matter by it's, it's what the manifestation that's down on the inside open up their eyes god so they can see that there's more for us than what is against us and what we do as a church we make a mistake and we, we, we deem the gift as an anointing. The talent, it, just because there's a gift and just because there's a talent, it does not mean that there is an anointing on it. Come on, we ain't got time. Come on, people need to be delivered. People need to be set free. People need to be changed. And we ain't got time to try to get together. He said, God, open up their eyes. One little small prayer. Because Elijah was, 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 was walking in power. He was walking in anointing. He didn't have time to say, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we plead the blood. He didn't, he, he, all he said was open up their eyes. Open up his eyes. Open up my servant's eyes. We about to fight the enemy. We about to go in war. We, 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 what's going on here? Why can't you see? Come on, my God. Why can't you see? We ain't got time for this. Oh, my God. And then after he prayed that small prayer, then his uh, then he can see. Come on, he can see that that the, the, the God was with them, the angels were with them. All oh, heaven was backing them up. That's what happened when you get on one accord in one place and in one city in one town. They all come together and the manifestation of God and His power will start moving. Like I said, we cannot have everybody going through and everybody can't be dealing with all the time. You got to get a team of people and say, God, I'm going to follow you all the way. That my life is going to be disciplined. My life is going to be lined up. My life is going to be in order. Come on, whatever it takes. I want the gift down on the inside to manifest your glory. So when pastor call me up and when pastor need me, come on, because I'm a, I'm a team, come on. And I'm not just a team at church, but I'm a team every day every part of my life so when god need to use me come on i my eyes will be open i won't be blind and i'll see there's more for us than against us i know this person that we praying for will be delivered i know this person we praying for will be set free now when you have a team of people around you we're talking about deliverance oh my god when you have a team of people around you everybody's operating on different gifts and everybody's operating on different talent i might be a pastor of the church but i know you walk in prophetic and i may not walk in prophetic i know i'm past the church but you walk in a gift of healing i may not i can i can pray for you and and, and i and i have a portion of that gift but if i know that you have the gift of healing i can't be blinded by my gift when i know somebody else walking i can't be blinded for, for, for what i perceive i have and i know someone else walk in that gift and walk in power then i gotta put my pride we're talking about deliverance we're talking about we all got to come together as one we all got to come together and bring in our talents and bring in our gifts and let God use us. No pride. Come on, no pride. 
no coveredness. No, I can do everything. Come on, oh my God! Especially if you have a team and you print. Come on, this is this is the this is the level of going into preparing for a team, preparing for the deliverance of God. Is 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 praying that our eyes are open, and it's not about my gift, your gift, and it's, it's all for the glory of God. It's all to meet the needs of the people, and it's all to so so somebody's life can be delivered and set free. We can have a team. We all jealous of each other. We can't have a team. We all insecure. That's a spirit. The insecurity spirit. Insecure about everything you're doing. And I know something in your past caused you to be insecure. And that's what God wants you to be delivered and set free. We can't have no jealousy. That's a spirit. Come on. That has to be bound and loose in the name of Jesus. But we all got to come together and we all got to rotate. Come on. Come on. There's times God want to use you and there's times God want to use me. I won't. Come on covered the whole thing and I want God to, to get the glory out of all of us and not the glory out of just me and sometimes we got to be delivered from wanting the glory all the time come on so when you're building a team you'll find out what everybody's gifts are you'll find out what God has called everybody to do and you build a team together we're talking about a team of deliverance come on oh my God if I lay hands on somebody and they fall out in the spirit, then I'm calling my intercessor. Then I'm calling my armor bearer. You cover me. Come on. And I got to make sure my armor bearer can actually cover me. Because in the in the process of deliverance, there, your eye got to open everybody's eyes so they can see. Because in the process of deliverance, the, de the, the devil will try to attack the person that's trying to lay hands on the liver. So everybody got to be on a post and everybody got to be in their places. No one on the team should be blinded. God open their eyes that they can see. God open up the intercessor's eyes. Open up the prayer warrior's eyes. God open up the armor bearer's eyes. God open up whatever position they're in because we got to manifest God's glory. Uh, at that point, it ain't no little eyes and big youth. At that point, it's about operation. When a doctor mm, is operating on a person, he can't operate by himself. He can't operate by himself. He got to make sure that, that, that the equipment he uses is sterile. He got to make sure that we ask for something. They know which one thing to give him. Come on. He got to make sure that they walk in excellence, that they know they crap and know what they supposed to do. In an operating room, come on, you wouldn't want nobody to operate on you that's, that, that's polluted and that's damaged and that's, oh my God, they don't know what they're doing, come on. It can cause the death of the person on the altar. It, it, it rouses up the enemy and, and they can leave defeated and not delivered because somebody's out of their place. They don't know their craft in the spirit. They don't know what they're called to. They don't know there's confusion on the altar. And it, what happens is people cannot get their freedom because we don't know what we're doing. Mm. Another book. Open up their eyes. God, open up their eyes. This ain't a place to be glamorous. I'm, I always tell people when we talk about deliverance, y'all, don't don't wear nothing you can't take off. <laughs> Somebody used to say you need to put pants under your pretty skirt because you may have to take the skirt off in front of everybody. We're talking about getting down and dirty. We're talking about this ain't a place we're coming for a social group. We're talking about building a team. If we just have a team together, we got the whole church. I don't care if the church got two or three thousand members. If you got a team together, the devil cannot get through. I, talk, I, I was talking to our church, uh, I think it was, uh, I don't know what day it was. It was one of these Sundays. I said, those on the front row, y'all better got have yourself together. Because if you ain't got yourself together, you need to go in the back row because you're supposed to be the guard. You, your prayer warriors, come on, intercessors. You can't be on the, on the front row dealing and going through. You go on the back row and deal and go through. But you cannot be on the front row. That's the front line. That's the guard. It's blocking the enemy. And then when people come up to the altar, there's a gate that shuts. Come on. 
Oh my God, oh my God, that the people on the altar shall feel protected and guarded. Because when they get on the altar, they're going to be opened up. It's like being in the operating room. Everything got to be sterilized and clean. So the people on the front row cannot be contaminated. The person on the altar. Ooh. Come on, where's well, just the front row? No, it's not. No, it's not. It's very, one lady where I was doing something. And I said something out loud. I said, don't go past this boundary right here. There's an anointing here. Don't go past it. Because I knew that there was something in her that was going to contaminate them. And she took it offensive. She took it very offensively. And uh, she started calling me a witch. <laughs> so I'm, I'm walking in witchcraft. I'm walking in something she kept saying. And she started telling everybody that Pastor Fleet just walking in, uh, you know, whatever she's walking in. Because she, because she did a lot. Of, you, know, you know, when you're, when you're in the spirit. And you're protecting those on the altar. There's sometimes you just got to be bold and say, do not step on that line right there. Do not step past that line. Because there's an area right there that the power of God is moving. And if you step in that area, you're going to contaminate the altar. Ooh, she didn't understand. It was too deep for her. She was acting like I was calling her a demon or a spirit. But you know what? First thing. If we had everything in place, that wouldn't happen in the first. Okay, y'all, come on. If we had everything in place, no, there's no way that lady could have got up to the altar. Come on. You got to have guards. Come on. You got to have protection. When the people come up to this altar, nobody can come up here and contaminate the altar. It's almost like having security in the spirit. Oh, my God. Come on, come on. We don't take this lightly because when they come up, it's just as serious as we're doing operation in the spirit, for, in the natural. It's exactly the same thing. It's just as serious, but we so blinded, we cannot see to the point is we don't take this very seriously. Oh my God. Open up their eyes. Father ain't got time for this. I ain't got time to explain why I yelled at you. I ain't got time to explain why you shouldn't come on this altar. I ain't got time to, 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 to uh, deal with misunderstanding. I, I don't have time for that. There's a soul in front of us. There's somebody need to be delivered. There's someone that's open up for the Lord. There's someone's life depend on us being in our place. Oh, my God. Ooh. So we got to pray. Come on. So when we come back and assembly ourselves together in church, you got to come back with information. You got to come back with revelation. You got to come back on post and on guard. And, and, and come on, let I always tell everybody all the time, say, enter to his gates with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. When I'm saying enter to his gates with thanksgiving, that means everything you thought you was coming in was going to fall off at the door because you entered his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Oh, magnify the Lord. Come on. So in spite of what I'm going through, I'm not bringing it into church. That's one thing about sinners coming in. Sinners do not pull the atmosphere. Y'all put that in. Sinners don't pull the atmosphere. What pulls the atmosphere and damages the atmosphere is so-called saved, sanctified people and filled the Holy Ghost people that come with all their troubles and come with all their problems. Hey, by so not, and they know the word of God. And a lot of times, you know, I'm, I'm a I'm an atmosphere setter, and I'm a, you know, I set the atmosphere and set the stage for the church before the church starts. A lot of times, my pull, most of my pull, all my pull, is saved, sanctified, and filled the Holy Ghost people that I gotta push. Praise God! Open your mouth. Come on, let's worship. Why do I have to do it? And we says enter His gates with thanksgiving, and into His courts with praise. So a sinner doesn't pull pull on the on the service. It's the Holy Ghost filled people that so called speaking tongues, that so called holy. Oh my God, that's coming to church. I don't know why people come to church. People have their different reasons for coming to church, but though it don't matter how they come, but we're talking about the team. You have to come.
come clean. You have to come holy. If you have to go to another room, come up and say, God, I repent before you, God. I know that I'm in a need, come on, in need of working today. I ain't got time to be dancing with the devil, God. Father, I'm getting ready to join this team. So everything on the inside of me, God, purge me. Come on, God. Come on, purge me. Cleanse me, God. Because I'm, I'm, I'm a front row. Come on. I'm, I'm, I'm the one that's on the guard. Come on. I am one of the securities in the spirit. I got to make sure that the area up front is covered. I got to make sure that the wrong thing is not getting in the atmosphere. I got to make sure that those are on the altar being operated on. That they're not being contaminated. Come on. That they're not leaving worse off than what they came. Y'all, I've seen, I saw that done before. They, they left worse than what they came. They were opened up. Everybody was laying hands on, oh my God. Transforming spirits. What they had on the inside contaminated the person on the altar. And they never came back to church. I often think about that lady and I'm like, God. Oh, Maralebasi. Give us a second chance. To, this is like three or four years ago. Maybe longer. Give us a second chance. Or put her in someone else's church. Uh, we come to church like we're doing something. Like we we're coming to church like we've been made to come. There's no excitement. There's no, uh, no power. No get up about yourself. The Spirit of the Lord is laying dormant. Ain't nothing moving and nothing shaking. And we don't, we don't take this very seriously of the call that's on our life. And pastors, we got to be careful who we have on our team and who we allow to minister with us. I don't care what they call themselves. I don't care what church they went to and called themselves an armor bearer. I don't care what they call themselves. They may be intercessor. They may be whatever they call. I don't care what they call. The names don't even matter to me. It's what I see now on the inside. Oh, no, but we, we stand behind our titles. We stand behind uh, what we used to be. We stand by anointing that's not, that's not even functioning anymore. Elijah said, oh, Lord. Please open my eyes, there are his eyes, so he might see. And instantly, oh, I think that's one thing I love about God, is instantly God opened up his eyes, instantly. Because God knows when there's something, when there's a battle going on and an enemy, the enemy's going on, God knows that the time, every minute and every second and time, time matters. It matters. Every second matters. The person on the music, the person on the keyboard cannot hit the wrong note. They got to be in the spirit. Everybody got to be lined up on one accord in one place. Oh, I feel the power of God. Hallelujah. We're going to say this prayer and I'm going to get off. I'm going to get off. I'm going to get off. Seems like there was something else I was supposed to be doing. I got stuff everywhere, y'all. So, okay. I'm going to do this prayer. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm like, oh my God, people don't take the altar seriously. They don't take God's people seriously. And we are, we at a place where people are committing suicide and people are doing all kinds of things. So this is the time to get it together. <laughs> I guess I'm always doing a get it together sermon. I'm a, I just say, well, she's, she's the one I always do the gloom and doom sermons, but somebody got to do it. Somebody got to do it. Somebody got to do it. The Bible says, lay, away every, lay aside every weight and every sin. That means anything that easy besets you or easy moves you out of that team. <laughs> we use a team right now. Anything that besets you or move you out of the will of God. We got to, when the team comes into the church, then it's almost like a gate going around the whole front of the church. And then there's a lock this, 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 that locks at the gate. Uh, they're covering the whole area 
around the pastures. They come the whole area because of this area up front is free of any distractions, free of any hindrance, free of any contamination, the, the air, the frequency, everything is clean. Then about the time the pastor get up or the prayer warriors get up or whoever's up with the microphone, it, uh, the, the, the whole area is, is functioning the way it's supposed to because only God only moves in order and not in confusion. God don't move in confusion. He'll leave your church. If there's any confusion in your church, you have to leave. So you have to get it together. You have to watch everybody. That's why I tell people at our church, come to church at least 15 to 30 minutes early. You ain't got time because if you come in late, don't even try to come on the front row. If you're walking in late, that means you're not taking seriously what your job is. If you come on, what I, what I always say, if you're, you're, uh, you're, you're on time, you're late. <laughs> If the church starts at 10 o'clock and you come at 10, you're late. <laughs> because you got to come in. I, I used, to, used to see people, I'm just reading this prayer, I'm just get off. I used to see, you know, when you're in the spirit, your nerves, I, I'm going to say nerves. I'll say spiritual nerves. When you're in the spirit, it's like you see everything. It's just like you just, and I used to watch this lady come in. Okay, y'all, this is years ago. We ain't talking about now. <laughs> I used to watch this lady come in late. She'll come on the front row. She has to open a purse. She has to get something out of her purse. Yeah, oh, and I'm looking. I'm, I'm thinking, if girl, lady, if you don't put that purse down, I don't think people have understanding. You ain't got time for that. It's like going on a job, and you got to be at the job at ten o'clock, and you come in at ten o'clock. You clock in, then go get your coffee. No. You come in early and get your coffee and get yourself together, comb your hair, whatever you do. You on the you on the clock now. You can't do nothing to your next break or your next lunch. We take advantage of the of of being, well, at least I'm on time. No, you're not on time. On time is early. You gotta be 15 minutes early. That's on time. <laughs> Soon as we sit, we want God to be right on time. But we're never, that's a spirit. We're going to talk about the spirit of being late. That's going to be, I'm, I'm trying, we, 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 we say exception the first is when we're going to get into the real deliverance part. Because, y'all, I'm struggling trying to, trying to, Pastor told me to go ahead and, 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 and do it by that need to. I think I'm going to go ahead and just jump into it. Because this, this, this is hard struggling, pushing around the deliverance thing when you, and you want to dive right into it. So it's struggle, it's a struggle sometimes trying not to, to get it to, you know, get it to where we're, we're doing our lessons that we're supposed to be doing on Tuesdays. We're going to start on September the 1st. But um, we're going to talk about the spirit of being late. You're late for everything. And then when it comes to church, um, you don't take it serious enough to know that, listen, when 10 o'clock comes, you should be already on post. You should be at least praying five minutes before church. You should already be in the spirit before church even starts. Because there's a guard that goes around the whole front of the church. And every time I get up, I see that. It's like seeing in the spirit. And I always tell people that every empty seat in here, there's an angel sitting in that seat. Because if there's a guard around and, and, and there's a protection going around the church, that means there's angels that's, that's, that's holding up. Oh, my God. That's holding their positions. Holding up the sword and saying, devil, you ain't going to get past this altar. You got to get past me. Come on. He said, I'm writing that date down, September the 1st. Yes, that's when we're going to start our, uh, to go deep into the class. So when we got a guard around the whole front of the church, there's angels on every corner that's guarding the, the deliverance. Oh, my God. That's guarding the place where people, the churches where people get delivered. The places, the church where people get operated on. But we didn't turn it to musicals. We didn't turn it to, to Sunday dinners. We didn't turn it to fashion shows. We didn't turn, I really believe that during this season, God has shut, he has shut all that down. I believe everybody got their Sunday clothes, burning them up right now because they're probably going to never use them again. <laughs> oh, God. Okay, y'all, we got to pray. I got to get out. We got to get going. We got to get going. Okay, y'all repeat this prayer after me. Here's our prayer points. Uh, I told you what the prayer is about. It's about our spiritual eyes being open, the ability to see in the spirit. Now, the ability to see in the spirit, but just because you in on a team and you are positioned in the church, you have, I, like I said, I use my daughter, for instance. When my daughter is with me. She is operating as an armor barrel 
at Walmart. She's operating as an armor barrel. Anywhere I go, if I say, like I said earlier before, if I say I gotta go to the bathroom, she goes look at the bathroom first. Then she said she she, she make, lets me stand outside the bathroom door. She makes sure everything's okay and ready. And then she tells me. So she's 24 hours. So it's not about, y'all got to listen, it's very good. It's not about being on your post in church. It's not about I'm the pastor's armor bearer, I'm the pastor's intercessor, or I walk in this, I walk in that, and you're on duty in the parameters of the church. It's not about that. It's about that it's your, your, it's your call is all the time. So when you get the church, come on, you, it's just a continuation of what you're doing at home. It's not about I'm a prayer warrior at church, but it's a 24-hour lifestyle. So when you do come in the church, that's what you bring in of what you did all week long. So those who got a team together, you got to constantly keep them on fast. You got to constantly keep them praying. You got to constantly check in on them. You got to constantly make sure they're accountable. Did you pray today? Did you read your word today? Did you fast today? Oh, no, we all going to fast together. We're going to do it three times a week, and we're going to only do this and that. It's making sure that it's all the time, not just in church, that you all the time in sync together and you're on one accord. Come on. We got to know what you're doing outside of church that we can look all pretty and, and look all together and you can run in with your clothes on and, and you can speak in tongues real loud and you can have them tears falling, but you have nickel D and you've done all this stuff down the inside of you and you're spewing out on the people. So we got to know that and that's where your seeing comes in. Open up my eyes, God, that I can look at everybody and say, no, you moved to the back row. No, not today. Come on, y'all Y'all got to put in disclaimer with your people and let them know that at any time I may just tell you to go on the back row. Come on. Come on. Nowadays, you got to sign disclaimer. Come on. Y'all get your disclaimers out there to know that, listen, if you want to join this team, just this just may happen. You may not be able to, uh, uh, you might not be able to pray today because I see something. I see you done something last night. Come on, God is showing me. Oh my God, come on. Because if someone was to manifest and go through flu one manifestation, that enemy can point you out in the circle. We're gonna get deeper in that stuff like that. Come on. Whenever someone manifests, come on, the evil force manifests. Do you know if that person was to turn around and look at those in the pews because it's, it's, it's operating in a spirit realm that they can see what that person did last night? Okay, we're not going to go there right now. That's why your whole team has to be together. I remember I was watching a program and, and this pastor was praying for this person and the person manifest. He said, your choir member over there with that guy over there and they were sleeping together and they were naked in a room. He said who it was and pointed them out. Come on. And then he went and asked them, were y'all sleeping together? He said, yes, we were. He said, you know what? From now on, that all my single people that's in my choir, you're going to get married. I declare that now because if you're not married, you're going to sin. And we cannot be spewing over the altar all your iniquities. And you think you can get in front of the church and pray. And, and you think you can get in front of the church and sing. He said, from now on... I'm praying that every one of y'all get married because we ain't got time for this. The spirit on the inside of that person that was manifested, he said, and I know somebody else in y'all's church. And he, he had to quit because the spirit was about to point out what people were doing. When someone manifests on the altar, it can tell all your business. Guess what? Because it's in a spirit realm. Woo! Okay, we'll stop there. Okay, Pastor got on. We probably saying, shut up, shut up, shut up. <laughs> Oh my God, y'all! I gotta stop. I gotta stop. We gotta pray. Come on, we gotta pray. Now I'm getting stirred up. First I was getting all, didn't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Now I'm feeling good. Now I feel God. Oh man, I'm telling you, sometimes when I get on, I get attacked really bad. My um, my mouth gets really dry. See, I ain't, see one thing God was showing me. He was like, see, you ain't got no umbrella with you. You don't have no prayer warrior with you. You ain't got the sound. See, my sound went off. You don't have no sound man to come turn your sound on. He said, you all by yourself. All this stuff you would normally, hey, sound man, do this. Hey, um, you ain't got nobody. You sitting there by yourself in front of a screen. Now what you going to do? So what we got to do is just keep on going until something happens. <laughs> and y'all just follow along with me while I get myself together. <laughs> Oh my God! If y'all can see this room right now, I got a, I got. Oh my Lord! I got stuff everywhere. So I don't even know what I'm doing. I don't have nobody say, oh, "Could you give me this? Could you give me some water?" 
I ain't got all that. Oh my God, y'all got to help me. I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best. <laughs> oh my God. I, oh my God. It's been a attack on me this morning, but I don't care. I'm going to keep on moving, keep on going. My mouth was getting so dry, I couldn't even talk. And I don't even have no water nowhere. That's okay. All right. Let's do the prayer. Y'all ready? Uh, oh God. Say, oh God, you are the God that reveals mystery and secrets. I'm going to try to go slow so you can repeat. Lord, open my spiritual eyes to see what my natural eyes cannot see. Uh, Holy Spirit, remove every spiritual cataract and spiritual scales from my eyes in the name of Jesus. Lord, reveal unto me that which is hidden. Ooh, that's a good one. Open my eyes to behold wondrous things in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, use me to speak to others by revelation in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, let the eyes of my understanding be enlightened in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, I put spiritual eyes, solve, I guess it's S-L-A-V, solve, upon my eyes, and I ask you, let me see what you see. Now that's, oh my God. Father, reveal those things that belong to me in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, don't keep your secret from me, your prophet. Father, I pray, take me up to your mountain of revelation so that I may see things I have not seen before in the name of Jesus. O oh God of Daniel, let, like you did with your servant Daniel, reveal to me the deep secret things. Holy Spirit, you are the power. You are the power behind the ministry of apostles and prophets in the Bible. Open my eyes like you opened their eyes in the name of Jesus. Woo. Holy Spirit, let me speak the mystery mysteries of Christ. Holy Spirit, reveal to me things that my eyes have not seen. My ears have not heard and neither have entered yet into my heart in Jesus name. Holy Spirit, as I minister to your people, show me their hidden secrets. That's what I was talking about right there. Show me their hidden secrets. As I minister, show me their hidden secrets and speak to them your wisdom in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, as Paul received abundance of revelation, grant unto me the same privilege in the land of the living. O oh God, make darkness become light before me in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, let your candles shine upon my head. Spirit of revelation, reveal and let me see what you are doing on the earth so that I can do it with you. Oh, my God. Holy Spirit, let me understand the deep things of God. Holy Spirit, let the gift of revelation be active in my ministry in the name of Jesus. I'm going to try to cut this one out and give it to y'all. I keep saying I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to do it today. I, I, I have this prayer uh, book on... Uh, my phone. I'm going to see if I can cut and paste it and sing y'all this prayer. It's open up my eyes. Come on, y'all going to be saying it all day. Open up my eyes that I may see, Lord. Because I don't want nothing that, that could contaminate. I don't want to be the cause of someone missing you. I don't want to be the cause of someone operating. You ever got operate when I, I had a, a C-section. I had four C-sections, but which child was it? My last child I got an um, operation, and because of one of the doctors didn't wash their hands or something, and it, it, it did something, it started an infection on inside the wound, so they had to reopen the wound again. Come on, y'all. That's a word all by itself. I was in the hospital two weeks. I had a C-section, but the, they didn't, something wasn't clean. And something was contaminated or something, and it caused my uh, wound to have an infection. And they tried to deal with it from the outside, but they ended up having to take me back in the operating room and open up the same uh, a wound again and clean it from the inside. Man, it hurt. It, it, you know, because uh, when they first saw the infection, they had to uh, put an ultrasound over the incision. So during the the, um, uh, the ultrasound, they could not give me no pain pills. So they had to they had to run over the the uh, the edge of I mean run over the the, the the whatever thing they was using over the wound so they can see the infection. And they said something about they give me pain pills that's gonna cover. I don't know what they was doing. I didn't care what they was doing. I needed some pain pills at that moment. But because of they, their neglect. 
I had to go back in and get operated on again because of their, they didn't do something they're supposed to do. Was well, the same thing in the spirit. If we don't, we don't get these people the first time. If, if we don't get them delivered uh, and set free, what happens is when they leave our church and they don't understand what's going on, they didn't get full, the full uh, experience or the full deliverance that God called them to, they'll leave the church open. And that's when uh, the enemy, first thing is mad because they came in a church. And if they leave undone, then the enemy, as soon as they get out the door, the enemy's going to grab them so hard and make sure they don't never come back. That one lady I was talking about, I've never seen her again. It's like four or five years ago. I've never seen that lady again. Because I knew that, that, that she didn't get her full uh, uh, deliverance. I knew that we didn't have everybody on post and everybody wasn't right. And she, uh, I, to myself, you came at the wrong day and the wrong time. But see, 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 that's why we got to get ourselves together. We ain't got time to get stuff together after the people get in. We always supposed to be prepared for they get in. And I never forgot that, forgot that day. I never forgot that day. And I always think about that woman. Ooh. Let me tell you how far she got. She got to the point where in her deliverance where she her her her, her hands was she was turned into like a lion her, her hands started you know you know it was just curling up and and no one was in place it was it was terrible so whatever is about to come forth had to go back down and i it, that just messed with me for years and i said god that will never happen to us again. And I know the lady did not get delivered. The, the spirit was coming up. You can see it starting to manifest through her. And it went right back down. And to this day, and my first thing I was thinking when she left out that door, I was like, God, cover her spirit because the devil is mad at her now because she got into the church. She came up to the altar and didn't receive the, and then we, 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 we messed with, the, with, oh my God, we was messing with the enemy. We was, we were praying and it was coming up. And then we didn't, that, that, that lady was, I, I, you know, I don't know. I, I can't tell you uh, what happened to her after she left. I can't tell you the, 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 uh, what she went through afterwards. One day we'll know. I hope we'll know one day. But that's a dangerous thing because we got people leaving uncovered. And the work was not finished. So that agitates the devil. There's no telling what she, what she went through. No telling what she had to go through when she left our church. And, he, and his, his job is, okay, this time, when she leaves this church, this time, she ain't never coming back. That's his job. So I've been covering that sister. Oh, no, she might be, uh, might have went to another church, and, and they finished the delivery. She might be okay because of our prayers covering her. So we have to be careful. So uh, hopefully y'all prayed that prayer. And hopefully um, whoever church y'all go to, that when you join the team, you will see, you know, what's out of order. And hopefully you go to a church that walk in excellence, that things are in order. But we're talking about deliverance ministries. We're talking about people that's operating under a high level of power and a high level of discernment. We ain't talking just on any old church that, that's all about the praise and worship team and the, and the choir and the, and the sound and the, and the microphone. We ain't talking about that type. We're talking about a church that their mind is focused on Jesus and a focus on the people and focusing on their deliverance and focus so they can be set free. Whew! This was a hard task today. <laughs> Oh, God. Okay, I'm just to let y'all go. I will see y'all Friday. Another thing I need to talk about, and I, I may do it Friday, because a lot of times like, you know, I don't know what I'm about to say. That's why y'all see everything all over the place, because I'll be getting stuff the last minute, and I don't, I don't be having my stuff together, y'all. But I may talk about it um, uh, Friday. Uh, we need to talk about the spirit of wisdom. Uh, we were talking about evil spirits and spirits of people need to be delivered, then there's spirits of wisdom spiritual knowledge is the spirit of uh, that's on the lord's side too so we're going to kind of cover both of them so we probably talk about the spirit of of wisdom um right i don't know for sure because i never know but I'll, I'll we'll see what the lord says for that day there but i pray that uh i didn't confuse y'all I, I you heard everything clearly and then um uh that it open your eyes and you can see and that uh y'all cover me please please cover me because i will i need your covering i need your prayers uh, so I can keep on doing this. Um, and I just pray that you receive something. And I am so grateful and humbled that you all decided to get on. I'm in almost an hour and a half, y'all. Okay, I got to go do my dog and, 
and um, if you need a, a prayer request, just put your prayer request on here. If you need to, to message me and need help in the way of deliverance, uh, the class will start in the month of September around the we have the first. I think the Tuesday is on the first. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I think Tuesday is on the first, and uh, everything was clear. April, okay, good, good, because I thought I probably was confused y'all when I first started because I was confusing myself. I think. Y'all, I talk so fast, and I'm, I'm really working on it. We are covering you. Love you. Thank you, Pastor Tara. Um, I talk so fast, and when I'm conscious of knowing that, I try to slow down. But sometimes the revelation comes out so quickly, and I just talk real, real fast. But um, Tuesday is the first is when we, because we're going to, we want to, um, we want to make sure that we walk in power. And we're talking about talking about, you say, you know, you're always covered. Thank you, dear. Thank you, thank you, thank you. My husband's on right now. Um, we want to make sure that we're doing it in power. And we're able not only to teach, but demonstrate. So that's why we're waiting all the way to September. It's giving us time to, to get everything in order and everything in place. Because we want to be able to, because I know that doing this course, a lot of people will be online. And we have some people coming in in person because we're doing this the social distancing and we're wearing a mask and all that stuff there. But we, we are opening our church for those who want to come into the church service. And we want to make sure that um, doing the deliverance class, everything may not be in place. And the whole idea is to gather up the team together to put things in place. I'll show you how to do it to go to take it to your church. So uh, we're going to talk on now. If someone needs to be deliverance in the midst of us doing this course, we're going to have a plan B. <laughs> well, that's going to be a plan A. Plan B will be the, be the other thing we talk about because deliverance is always first. But we're going to have something in place. Um, we're going to make sure everything's in order. And I, I love the idea about the church being closed because you get to sit back and see what you need to put in place and how out of order your church really was. Sometimes you don't see until you step back and just really look. Anyway, I love everybody. Y'all, please pray for me. I will pray for you. And I will see y'all Friday at 10 o'clock. Love everybody. Bye-bye.